Welcome to Great Bridge Presbyterian Church. Today, the Spirit's Invitation. This is the invitation from heaven to earth, the Holy Spirit in the heavenly places, Jesus Christ in the heavenly places, and the bride is the church of God that has gone before us into heaven and the church of God all over this world, and they are calling from heaven saying, come, come to me. Join us as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Dobri Utra. Bon dia. Buongiorno. Bonjour. Boker Tov. Aloha. Buenos dias. Guten Morgen. Saba Al Kair. Subra Pak. Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family. You have just heard so many good mornings in so many different languages because this Sunday is a reminder of this day of Pentecost. It had originally been a Jewish feast, and the disciples were gathered in Jerusalem, and all of these Jews were gathered from all over the world. And we remember this Sunday, the fire of the Holy Spirit coming down with different tongues, and the gospel was preached in all different languages that morning. So good morning, church family. Well, good morning indeed. And as Kelly mentioned, today is Pentecost, and this is a pretty unique Pentecost that we're in right now. But it's a good reminder that what we celebrate at Pentecost is the church going forth, the church going out. You know, this is a building, but you guys are the church. Where you are right now is the church, and you can go out and you can share this message. We hope you share it. We hope you like it. We hope you subscribe to it. Tell as many friends about the work that we're doing here, and then go be the church. We're excited, and we wanted to say thank you. 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 Thank you for everything that you've done to partner with us during this time, and in general, we're so thankful for this congregation. Well, we have a lot of exciting things going on in our church and coming up in the life of our church, so please take a look. Hi, I'm Judy Steinmetz. Isn't this a beautiful garden? Did you know that we actually have a garden ministry here at Great Bridge Presbyterian Church? We do. We have so many people that work this, not just in the summer, but all year long. It is a wonderful way to share food with those that really need it. And we would love to have you join the garden ministry team. We have lots of opportunities for you to volunteer, from watering to weeding to planting and to help deliver the food. If you're interested in joining this wonderful ministry, please contact me, Kevin Brookshire, or Mike Goron for more information. Thanks so much. Amazing Great House. I think that the oh, yeah, two notes, right? Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I want some blood of you. Ah! <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. found. Whoops. Was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Has your family come up with a team name? Join us on July 25th and 26th for the Amazing Grace Race. Well, this is the time in our service where as an act of worship, we bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. We have lots of different ways to give. You can give online, you can text to give, and you can always send in your check to the church. We greatly appreciate your generosity during this time. We really do. And your generosity is making a difference in the lives of people. I can't tell you the conversations I have with people that have been recipients of the second mile. I and mean, we are keeping families afloat mm -hmm. right now, families that might not have anywhere else to turn. And not just families, but larger organizations within our community. Like this church is doing some amazing work. And we're so thankful that you've chosen to partner with us. Thank you. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your 
with me. Our great and holy God, we love you and we worship you and we thank you so much for the gift of your Holy Spirit on this Pentecost day. God, we remember the fact that when you died, when you were resurrected and when you ascended back into heaven, you didn't leave us alone, but you sent us a comforter, an encourager, someone to speak your truth and your peace and your grace and your joy and your beauty into our lives. God, we need your Holy Spirit every moment of every day. God, from the moment we wake up, we need to feel your Spirit. We need to feel the joy of your Spirit. As we go about our day, Lord, we need to rest on your Spirit. As we make decisions, as we think about things, we want to rely on the discernment that your Spirit gives us. And Lord, as we lay our heads down at night, Lord, we want to rest in the sweet uh, sleep and peace that comes from your Holy Spirit, comes from a life well lived, a life lived in your spirit. You are life and your spirit is life. So we just pray, come 
Holy Spirit, come. Come and descend on this place. Descend on us wherever we are gathering, uh, worshiping together. And thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your Holy Spirit and that you taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, today is a very special Sunday in our church calendar. It's one of the few times that we pull the red parapets and the red colors out of our storage closets. And the color red is symbolic of the Holy Spirit because of what happened on that first Pentecost in the early church. Now, it wasn't the first Pentecost in the church calendar or in the world calendar. Pentecost was actually a Jewish festival, a Jewish feast one of several times a year that God called his people to celebrate. And it's Pentecost because Penta is five. And so Pentecost took place 50 weeks after the beginning of the harvest or after the beginning of Passover. And so Pentecost was one of the festivals that was a pilgrimage festival. So people were supposed to come to Jerusalem and to bring God a part of their harvest in thankfulness for the harvest of that year. So in Jerusalem, there would be Jews from all over the known world who would come. And God had a plan for that day. God had a plan for that time. Jesus has just ascended into heaven. He has left behind his instructions to go and make disciples. And he said, wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they didn't have to wait very long. Peter is filled up and Peter is ready to preach. He preaches on the temple steps. We think that thousands of people were probably there listening and the disciples, these tongues of fire come down on them and they are speaking in all different languages. This was this beautiful picture of the early church now expanding into the world with even the languages of those people being spoken and the gospel spreading. So this seems like a very fitting way to finish our walk through the New Testament today. Because this was the beginning of the early church movement, a movement that we continue to this day, 2,000 years later, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the coming of the Holy Spirit on that day was a moment where heaven came down to meet earth. And in the final book of scripture, the book of Revelation, Heaven makes an invitation to those of us on earth, and then we are called to make an invitation to heaven. Hear the word of the Lord from Revelation chapter 22, the final words of the books of scripture, beginning in verses 17. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Please pray with me. Our great and holy God, we come before you today and we thank you that heaven and earth come together that they came together in the person of who you are, and that heaven and earth come together as we see these Holy Spirit moments and as your Holy Spirit guides us and directs us. We welcome your presence here, Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence here, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we ask for you to reveal the message that you have for us from these final words of your wonderful scripture. 
We pray all these things in your most powerful name. Amen. Well, it's amazing to look back on our walk through the Old and New Testament is that we looked at the sayings of many wise people. The scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And one of the wisest men to ever live was King Solomon, David's son. And the book of Ecclesiastes, there's kind of a lot to wade through in Ecclesiastes. It kind of feels like, well, daily life is rough, isn't it? We all know, yes, definitely, daily life is rough. But in the middle of the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon gives us this glimpse into how heaven and earth interact. And he gives us this glimpse into eternity. He wrote, God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men and women. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. When we began this walk, we began in the book of Genesis, in the beginning. And the final words of scripture, come Lord Jesus, come, the grace of God be with God's people, amen. There's so much that we see from beginning to end. We see these threads of redemption. We see these threads of salvation. We read these stories of the heroes of the faith. We read of success and we read of failings. We read of hatred and we read of love. We read of all of these things in the scriptures and we see these threads. Yet in the midst of it, there is so much that God is at work doing that we can't even contain in our hearts and in our minds everything that God has done. Solomon said, we can't fathom what God has done from beginning to end. So we keep it simple. We talked last week about keeping it simple. And this week, we're going to keep it simple again. What is God doing? What is God at work doing? For the last couple years, I've actually had the opportunity to preach on Pentecost. And my message is the same this year. And pay attention, because my message is probably going to be the same next year. Because we cannot fathom what God is up to, he is so much higher and so much deeper than we are. He calls us to keep it simple. And on Pentecost Sunday, it's a reminder of how we can stay close to God, even when we don't know exactly what God is up to. We stay close to Jesus, and we listen to the Holy Spirit. It's that simple. And as we walk through this life, from our beginning day to our end day, we remember today that we can get caught up in Holy Spirit moments. These times where heaven and earth seem to intermingle and interact in such powerful ways. For me, one of those Holy Spirit moments was Christmas Eve. And it was our first Christmas Eve here And I remember that Mike and I came to the front and we had our candles and both of us just on instinct, we hadn't even really talked about it, on instinct as we sang the final verse of Silent Night, we raised our candles and all over the sanctuary we saw these candles rising and singing this song and it was just this moment, this Holy Spirit moment of seeing a little glimpse of heaven and earth meeting. This beautiful light reflecting the light of God and reflecting a little piece of what eternity will be like. Yet, of course, we didn't know at that time that the world was going to change. The world was going to change very, very quickly. And so I hold on to that Holy Spirit moment as a reminder that in the midst of every circumstance, God is raising his light. He is raising his people up to preach who he is. And to do that, we have to stay close to Jesus and listen to the Holy Spirit. Because John in the book of Revelation is talking about an event that will happen at some time we don't know. When another significant Holy Spirit moment will happen, when the kingdom of heaven will break through physically, emotionally, spiritually into the kingdom of earth and a new heaven and new earth will be created there will be a Holy Spirit, heaven and earth moment. Because the book of Revelation, 
We once had a professor in seminary describe it as kind of a corkscrew. It's a movement back and forth between heaven and earth. And so sometimes we see John in earth, sometimes we see him in heaven, and that's why you have to read it very carefully, because you're trying to figure out where he is and where his placement is. And before these final verses, we believe that John is probably sitting on that island of Patmos, and he's probably on his knees having received all of these visions and pictures. Some were glorious, some were so difficult. And the final words that Jesus speaks to John is to identify himself as this fully man, fully God, heaven and earth person. He says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches, the testimony for you and for me. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star. And those two parts of who Jesus is bring heaven and earth together first in a person. I am the root and the offspring of David. He sets himself in our earthly context. He is a descendant of this glorious king, King Solomon. He is a descendant of this glorious lineage of palaces and the temple that Solomon created and the wealth and the wisdom and the power. But yet, when Jesus Christ came with such an amazing lineage, he didn't come as a king. He came through a poor teenage girl, through a terrified father who just listened to the angels and did what they said. Because by the time the Holy Spirit moment came, that heaven and earth came together, God was going to do it in an unusual way. And we are now in unusual circumstances. We are in an unusual Holy Spirit moment. And God is calling us and has been calling us, just like on that Christmas Eve night, to raise those candles of his light in every way that he calls us to. And to do it sometimes in an unusual way, ways you never would have possibly imagined. You know, Mike always jokes that because home economics were never really taught during my time in high school, I can't sew a button on. Uh, well, I can do simple dishes, but basically anything Mike asks me to sew, I just say, you're going to have to buy new pants. That's it. I can't sew anything. But God is using this gift of sewing, this unusual gift. These days, it's unusual for our generation. This unusual gift of sewing, he is using it in a powerful new way during unusual circumstances. Did you know that our mask ministry has sent hundreds of masks throughout the area? We have even sent 200, over 200 masks to homeless people in Boston so that they can be saved and they can be protected from this virus. In Boston, we don't even know any of these people. But yet from the homes of our parishioners, they are making something that I can't make, that most of the women of my generation can't make, they are using these skills in these unusual circumstances to spread God's love. That is a Holy Spirit moment. That is God using unusual circumstances to do a new and powerful thing. And that is happening in our church in so many ways. As we remember all the ways that people serve, we see heaven and earth come together not just in the beauty of a service, which we see it, and we are so thankful for worship, but we see these unusual Holy Spirit moments happening all over the place. Because God anchored himself in earth in an unusual way. And he works through us in unusual circumstances in new and unusual ways, and we are seeing it. Thank you, church, for showing us that again. We are seeing it. But he wasn't just rooted in the earth. He wasn't just flesh. He was fully God. He said, I am the bright and the morning star. I come from heaven and I will return from heaven. The day of Pentecost is right after Jesus had ascended back into heaven and said, wait for the Holy Spirit and then go for it. Go out there and make disciples and preach the gospel. And why he said that is because he was physically leaving the earth, but physically he is going to come again. And during that time, the invitation 
this first invitation that we hear from heaven to earth is come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. The Spirit and the bride say, come. This is the invitation from heaven to earth. The Holy Spirit in the heavenly places, Jesus Christ in the heavenly places, and the bride is the church of God that has gone before us into heaven and the church of God all over this world, and they are calling from heaven saying, come, come to me. Come to me and let me use you in powerful ways. But not even just let me use you, let me love you in new and unusual ways during this time. Yeah, we think of so much of moving outward, but the invitation from heaven is, come, come to me. And that is what Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God the Father are inviting us to this morning, is come to me. Look at how heaven and earth interact. Look at how heaven and earth came into Jesus Christ and how fully God and fully man. He has ascended physically, but we can come to him spiritually and know him that is the invitation from heaven to earth come are you ready are you ready for jesus to return again we've been waiting for two thousand years we don't know how much longer we're going to wait but time to god the man of all eternity time doesn't mean much so we have an urgency to the time are we ready are we coming to him letting him love us, letting him change us, letting him transform us. The spirit calls to us. The church calls to us. Our descendants, our lineage, the generations that have gone, come, come. Are you ready? Are you ready? And it's wonderful to look at the idea of generations. You know, we love looking at our backgrounds, our family stories, our lineage. And there is a wonderful juxtaposition or contrast that was made several years ago between the family and generations of a Puritan preacher, Jonathan Edwards, and a convicted convict, Max Jukes. Now, Jonathan Edwards is the person that probably most of us, if we knew him, would probably kind of want to dislike him. He he graduated from college, I think at something like age 13. Brilliant. Uh, He spent years writing sermons. Um, He was just this amazing preacher who, when he spoke, People said that they would just groan in the church. And he wasn't this dynamic preacher. It was just the very words he spoke were so powerful that people would just groan. And the generations from Jonathan Edwards' family, it's impressive. There are missionaries. There are uh, presidents of colleges and seminaries. I mean, there are politicians. There are powerful people that come out of this family. And when they looked down five generations from Jonathan Edwards, they thought, wow. Look at the impact he had. And so they called it the five-generation rule. That when you see the impact of your life, you look back five generations and see where that began. Well, for Max Jukes, it was a very different story. They discovered that in one New York penitentiary, there were 42 men who were connected to him in some way. 42! And when they looked back five generations, all they saw was crime and difficulty And all of these horrible burdens of sin that were enmeshed in this family. And they they contrasted these two families and they said, what in the world did Jonathan Edwards do right that Max Jukes didn't? And many historians say, well, you know what? It wasn't necessarily Jonathan. They point to his wife, Sarah. They point to his bride. Because she spent that time with each of those children intentionally, one-on-one, bringing them up in God's word. And we as the church are called the bride. And there have been 111 generations since Jesus went back to heaven. So it's a lot of five-generation rules. We've had a lot of time to get this right. But maybe we are called to be like Sarah. When we have this invitation from heaven to earth, come, we come first And then we're getting ready, but then we're getting others ready to come. We're getting others ready to come and to hear that invitation. The Feast of Pentecost took place as the end of the harvest. And all the wheat fields had been gleaned, all the harvest brought in. 
And Jesus looked out on the fields and he said, look at the harvest. Look at what is there. The harvest is there. The workers are few. And so he calls to us to take part in his work. Let him who hears say, come. So now we're hearing the invitation going back to heaven. The invitation from heaven to earth was come. Come be loved by me. Come be transformed by me. Come be equipped by me for you to go out and to be the bride. And then the invitation from earth to heaven is come. Those who hear will say come. And it's hard to imagine that there are those in this world who have never heard the name of Jesus. But I recently read a description of David Platt. He's a pastor actually here in Virginia of his trek through the Himalayas and encountering people who, when he asked, can I pray for you in Jesus' name, would say, who is Jesus? And it's hard to imagine that there are those out there who have never heard the name of Jesus. And Jesus is speaking to those who have never heard his name. Let him who hears say, come. So we need to speak it. We need to go forth. As he told his disciples, go forth and speak his name. Preach his gospel. And then he said, whoever is thirsty come. Because there may be people in our lives who have heard the name of Jesus over and over and over again, but they're not thirsty yet. And God is calling us to pray that they are thirsty so that they will seek him out. And when they seek him out, we are ready to proclaim his name to them in a new way, maybe even an unusual way, because the Holy Spirit works in unusual ways, in in unusual circumstances, in unusual circumstances and moments. My Pentecost sermon is always very simple. The invitation from heaven is come. And we answer back to heaven, come. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of God be with God's people. Are we ready? Do we hear the call to come to him? Are we getting others ready? Are we the bride who is bringing up those around us in the knowledge of God so that they call out to heaven on their own? Are we asking the Holy Spirit for these Holy Spirit moments where we see heaven and earth come together? Are we ready? Are we getting others ready? It's simple on this Pentecost Sunday, friends. Stay close to Jesus. Hear his invitation to you from heaven and listen to the Holy Spirit. Come and come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Please pray with me. Our great God, we are thankful for this walk through your word. We're thankful for your word from beginning to end. That, Lord, we can't even fathom all the things that you have done. We read these stories, we read these words, but there is so much more that is going on. And there is so much more that you are at work doing right here and now. So God, we hear your invitation. Help us to hear your invitation. Come and help us, God, to call back to you. Come, Lord Jesus, come fill us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your power so that those who hear may say, come. And those who are thirsting may come to the waters and find the gift of life. Lord, we know that the time may be short. We know that there is an urgency to preaching your gospel. So help us to stay close to you. Help us to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. On this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded that you are at work. You are at work in unusual ways, in unusual circumstances. And we ask you, God, to fill us and to come. We pray all these things in your most powerful name. Amen.
Well, friends, on this Pentecost Sunday, we remember that the power of the Holy Spirit filled the early church 2,000 years ago, and the power of the Holy Spirit continues to fill us as heaven calls us into the work of God, and as we call to heaven, come, Lord Jesus, come. Thank you for joining with us, you guys. We are so glad to partner with you in ministry and to realize that you are the church. What you guys are doing on a day-to-day basis to love people in Jesus' name and to go out there and get his gospel out is so important. We appreciate you. We love you. We value you. And we want you to receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be be with with you all all, now now and and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Blessings. See you guys soon. Become more aware of your friends.